AMH, the mistake I made. Let me tell you the biggest mistake people make with AMH. And yes, doctors make this mistake too. The mistake I made with AMH. Years ago, I used AMH like a fixed through. Low number equals low aches, full stop. I regret that because new data shows the number is far more unstable than we thought. I will never panic a patient based on a single low AMH result. A new study on 1,800 women showed something shocking. Among women who had very low AMH, 42% later tested above that low level. 42, almost half. Not because the ovary recovered, but because AMH is a noisy test with short-term fluctuation. No one told me that AMH can swing up or down like a coin toss in six months. Literally 50-50. It can go up, it can go down. Young women, especially under 30, fluctuate the most. And here is the part nobody wants to say out loud. A rise in AMH does not mean your aches increase. It usually means the test is unstable. In real life, inside the clinic, AMH is useful for one thing, predicting how strongly your ovaries respond to IVF drugs. That's it. It does not predict natural fertility. It does not measure egg quality. It does not guarantee future pregnancy. But patients are still told it's a verdict on their future. That's the real problem. So here's my rule now. If AMH doesn't match the clinical picture, I repeat the test. Not for false hope, not for miracles, but because AMH is a snapshot, not a destiny. One number on a day should never decide your future. If you want another video on what AMH can predict and what it absolutely cannot predict, tell me in the comments.